Good evening. If we could start the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Street School for hosting us this evening. Uh, just, let, just in case anybody needs them, the restrooms are out the back corner of the cafeteria. <clears throat> we'll start the meeting with item 1.0, consent agenda. I make a motion to move the consent agenda. I have a motion to move the consent agenda. Mr. Kemp? Oh, I am. Are you seconding the motion to... Uh, oh. No. Yep, Ms. Sarn, you're seconding? Okay, so we've got a motion and a second. Mr. Kemp? Motion item B. Full item B. Okay. Anybody else wish to have anything pulled from consent? Seeing none, I'll take a motion on uh, consent agenda 1.1A and 1.1C. Uh, by a show of hands, all in favor? And that's your name. Okay, Mr. Kemp, you have a score for item 1.1B. The uh, Finance Committee meeting minutes, if it's correct, indicate that there were five members of the Board of Education at the first of the two Finance Committee meeting, uh, <coughs> meeting, excuse me. Is that correct? I think that's an illegal meeting of the Vernon Board of Education. I could be wrong. It's a posted committee meeting, but when you have a quorum of the board without posting it ahead of time, that constitutes an illegal meeting. And I can't vote for that. I'll uh, simply vote no when it comes up for a vote, but that's my view of that. So we'll uh, investigate that question. I know uh, in the past we've had board members sit in on committee meetings as observers and uh, it hasn't been an issue but we will investigate that with, the, with our council to make sure that it isn't a legal meeting because as a citizen they should be able to listen in on the meeting it is a published meeting but uh, okay. Mr. Uh, Mr. Person? there's uh there's no action taken at any of the finance meetings so i don't see it as an issue okay. yes, sir. i thought we had discussed at one point that the finance committee could be a committee of the Whole? The budget steering Just is a committee steering? of the whole. Okay. That's when we do all of our budget work. The finance committee is a subcommittee uh, of the board. Okay. Mr. Kemp, we'll for a second time. I appreciate that no action was taken, but the problem is other board members have no idea ahead, ahead of time whether or not action might be taken, such that uh, I might feel compelled to come to the meeting. Uh, because someone might make a motion when there are five people, and if they did, well, that would be a legal, mo a legal motion and binding uh, of the board. Uh, so I think that we should reconsider what we're doing. Um, the purpose over the years was to keep four people in the committee for that very same concern, and. Uh, for a long time, we seem to have been holding to it. We put members of both parties in each committee on purpose so that there is bipartisan representation on committees, as there has to be on a board of ed. But um, I don't think it's a good idea that we have five or more members uh, in situations like that. That's all. Okay, Mr. Kemp. Yes, sir. Through you, Mr. Bull, if those who are not on the committee are simply listening to the discussion, and if there is a vote to, to I mean, a motion made to bring something to the board, that person who's listening is not voting, so it would never be a quorum of the board. It would simply be the members of the committee voting, not anybody who is listening. Um, I will, like I say, take this to our council and just have him confirm for us that this 
uh, that we have been following the proper procedure of. Uh, I don't believe that uh, it's an illegal meeting of the board, but uh, I will have that verified. Uh, as I say, I think it's to debate it, but we will ask a question. It is a published meeting. The agenda is published ahead of time, and uh, it is a committee meeting. Uh, we will review that, and uh, we will, I will report back to the board uh, the findings. Pending no new discussion on that topic, I would look for a motion to approve item 1.1B. 1. 1 Mr. Person. So moved. A motion to approve item 1.1B. 1. 1 and do I have a second? Ms. Arn? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further debate on that motion? Seeing none, by a show of hands, all in favor? And those opposed? And I show one opposed. Motion does carry. Okay, item 2.0, Secretary's report. Item 2.1, opportunity for Board of Education members to add or delete agenda items. Does anybody have any agenda items to be added or deleted this evening? Seeing none, we'll move on to item 2.2, Rockwell High School student representative. Uh, for your report this evening, I don't know which one you want to go first. I'll go first. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'll start out with the FFA news. Um, for the first time ever, we're having a food drive. We're hosting it April 8th through the 12th, and we're going to have a tractor in the front of the school, and the goal is to fill the tractor. We're going to start out by filling the front of the, um, the bucket truck, and then we're going to end up putting all that food into the back of the hay wagon, and then having a police escort to bring it all the, with the tractor down to HBCC to deliver it. We plan on having the tractor in the front of the school April 8th through the 12th and it's going to be up there 7 to 8 a.m. and on April 12th we're going to have it open 2 to 6 p.m. so we'll have an opportunity for more people to come. Um, our banquet is planned for May 30th. State convention is June 1st and we're proud to say that we have the number one horse evaluator in the state which is Aaron Delubak and we came in third for livestock judging as far as state wise goes. We are well represented in this coming states coming up here, we have Aaron DeLubeck that is going to be competing in extemporaneous public speaking, which is where you're given a random speech topic and you have to you have like 30 minutes to write a speech and then present it in front of a panel of judges. Creed speaking, which is a five paragraph creed which you have to memorize and present into a panel of judges as well, is being read by Haley Yates, who is a freshman. And then for prepared public speaking is where you can prepare a speech and then present it into a panel of judges. I will be representing our chapter at States. We are also getting ready with tractor driving, aqua, and vet tech as well for competing. Um, for sports news, baseball, lacrosse, track, and tennis are all getting ready for a good season. Hopefully, it'll end up as great as BCR's was. Um, J.R. Peretti went to all states and we want to recognize him as doing a great job. All right, we have Band-Aid coming up this Thursday, and there's going to be teacher, student, and police department involvement. We also have the student um, versus teacher basketball game. The teachers won. We raised $150 for the food pantry. We also had the volleyball lock-in, and it went smoothly, and everyone that went had a really good time. And we also recently had the hypnosis show, which is always an experience. It's really fun to see your classmates on stage and making a fool of themselves. <laughs> also, we have our proms coming up, which everyone's really excited for. And tomorrow, actually, the education consultant, Brad Brazen, from NBC, is interviewing Mrs. Norland and is doing a, a uh, segment on making the grade. And other great creative writing news, we have two national winners for the Scholastic competition. Uh, Hannah Gearhard, a gold and silver key, and Rachel Nutt, a gold key for her flash fiction, and Rachel was actually chosen to read her work um, at Car Carnegie Hall on stage, so it's going to be a really great experience. Thank you, Thank you very much for your reports. Does anybody have any questions for our student representatives this evening? Dana, thank you. I echo your congratulations to the hockey team and the, uh, the writers for their success. <clears throat> item 3.0 is community forum. It's the opportunity for comments on agenda items, potential agenda items, uh, 
potential future agenda items or general information to be provided to the board from citizens and from community organizations. Is there anybody who wishes to speak to the board this evening? If so, please raise your hand and be acknowledged. Please come forward and state name and address for the record. Tanya Damon Merrill, 138 Grove Street. Um, I have a couple of things I'd like to bring to the board's attention. First off, I would I really like the revised calendar for next year. Um, I prefer the Friday professional development, early dismissal days, whatever you like to call them, especially after experiencing three straight days of early dismissal last week, which was a bona fide nightmare. In my humble opinion, it was not enjoyable at all for myself or my children for three straight days getting out at 102. Not fun. Um, so I do like the calendar that is revised with the Friday days. I still am concerned with the number of professional development days that we have incorporated in the calendar and the suggestion that I have for that is specifically for kindergarten students since I will have an entering kindergartner next year. If you're a PM student, you lose out big time on those days. So I don't know if there's a way to rotate them. One day AM, I know logistically that might be a nightmare, but with that call thing that you have now, I forget what the technical name, you could be making phone calls to those parents, but if I have a PM kindergartner, my kid is at a real disadvantage for next year's calendar with the professional development days. And then the budget is on my mind a lot. And um, I just have a question in regards to the teacher coaches and how their success is measured. Like, I am, they've been in place for almost three years now, I think I'm correct there. But how do we know that what they're doing is working? You know, I look at the universal data and I don't see a huge improvement. And so I'm questioning whether the monies that we're spending on teacher coaches would be better spent in our full day kindergarten program that we desperately, in my opinion, need in this district if Common Core is going to be our kindergartner's reality. And I don't think the time that we have set in our district for kindergarten is going to make successful kindergartners. So I don't know if that money can be adjusted. I know some of the dollars that we spend on teacher coaches are from the Alliance Grant. <coughs> and that could be, pose a problem. I don't know if we're allowed to shift those dollars and play with them. I'm not sure how cut in stone it is when you put in your grant, but I see that kindergarten full day is more needed and our dollars would be better spent in full day kindergarten than on teacher coaches. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who wishes to speak this evening? Please come forward, state your name and address for the record. Hi, I'm Deb Cutting, 90 Court. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the community service requirement for graduation, and I completely support requiring community service prior to graduation. I think it um, allows the students to help others in their community, as well as introduce them to experiences they might not, they might not um, be uh, exposed to. Um, currently, only community service completed during the school year toward, uh, counts towards fulfilling this requirement. So I'm asking that you consider allowing community service completed during the summer to count towards the 40 hour requirement. Some students are extremely busy during the school year with class, work, extracurricular activities, work, and family commitments. Since this, is a, since this is a requirement for graduation, let's give the students extra time and assistance in the summer to help them reach their goal. Thanks. 